What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So if you've ever had to create something with any kind of wood paneling or anything that has a lot of repeating objects, so you know that that can be really time consuming and frustrating having to go in and manually edit a bunch of geometry. So we're gonna talk about some strategies in order to solve that problem. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so let's say that we've got a shape like this one. So on the right hand side, everything is simple. Let's say that we needed to infill this with paneling. So let's say we had a little panel. And let's say that we need to infill this shape all the way up. Well, it's simple for this particular shape because they're all gonna be the same size. So if I was to take this and I'm gonna make this a component right here, and we'll just call this paneling. And then we would just use the move tool in copy mode to create copies. And then we'd enter however many copies we want like this and the space is full. Not a big deal. However, when we start dealing with a shape like this one, it's not that easy. The reason it's not that easy is because if we were to come in here and let's create a copy of this shape, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna explode this and just make it a group. We don't necessarily want it to be a component because every one of these is going to be different. So we don't really get benefits out of the component functionality. But now if I was to make copies of this one all the way up, we've got a problem, right? And the problem is that these panels are all running through this piece of wood and we would have to edit them manually. And so there's, there's a couple different ways that we could approach this, right? So the first way that we could do this if we wanted to, and I'm just gonna do this for all of the upper objects, is we could just explode them like this so that they're no longer groups. And then we could come in here and we could draw a box along the surface like this, push pull it through those objects, and then I would just come in here and triple click on everything to select it all, right click, and just do an intersect faces with model. So what that would do is that would intersect all of these faces in here with that model. And so if I turn on x-ray mode, you can see how all of these are still in here, but they've been cut across the surfaces. So let's go ahead and let's hide our actual structure here for a second. So if we were to hide our structure and look at this, you can see what we've done is we've intersected this with all of these boards. And then we can just come in here and we can just erase out all of our extra stuff right here. Now, there's a lot of things that are frustrating about this. Like for example, you have to make sure that you don't accidentally pick up the wrong geometry or anything like that. But it's definitely a viable option if this is what you wanted to do. So notice how I'm just coming in here and just hacking out this extra stuff in here like this. And so that's come in here and that's cut off every single board. So we could definitely do this, but notice the amount of cleanup I'm having to do in order to get rid of all this extra geometry that's in here um, before I unhide this. Plus I had to get rid of the actual individual groups themselves. So if I do an edit, unhide all. Now we've got our edge in here and we've got our individual boards. So that's definitely a way to do this. Um, it's not necessarily the wrong way, but I think it's a little more complicated than it needs to be. So another way that we could do this is we could use the move tool in copy mode like this, select all of these objects, right click on them and do an intersect faces with model. And so when we do that, let's hide our structure again. What that's done is that's intersected anywhere where these objects um, have run into other geometry in our model. So what that does is that basically creates like a slice across them. Well then, if I was to click into each one of these, I could erase out this extra geometry. And so what I could do with those is then I could just come in here and erase out this extra geometry. But I would basically have to do some redrawing in here as well to get all of my surfaces to show back up. So again, I mean, you could do it, for each one of these, but it's not going to be ideal, right? Because you'd have to come in here and re-edit every single one of these. But for some shapes, that's gonna make sense. For this one, probably not. And so the last way to do this is to use an extension. 
This extension is called Curic Face Knife. I will link to this in the notes down below. You can download this for free just by entering a $0 value, or if it has value to you, you can also place a number in here and um, donate a little bit to the developer. So um, either way, you can download that from this, which I will link to in the notes down below. Well, the way this works is it allows you to use a face to trim objects in SketchUp. So let's say that I had all of my boards in here like this. And so what this tool is going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to use a face to trim our objects. So in this case, all I would do is I would just draw a shape over top of this like this. So you can see how it's a surface right here. Well then I would come in here and I would select all of my objects except this face. So the tool is activated and then I can just activate Curic face knife and click on this face. And it's going to give me a little bounding box right here showing me where it's going to cut. Well then, I can just tap the inner key and it's going to cut that object. Well then, you can get rid of your cutter face. You can see how this trimmed all of these objects based on the location of that face. So if I was to hide this right here, notice how all of my panels in here are perfect aligned with where the edge of that face was. And so this works for lots of different applications. So for example, let's say that we had some kind of a deck made out of repeating boards. You could just select the repeating boards, select the face, and then click on this trim option. Well, notice how it's gonna show you where the trim is going to happen. Then if you hit that enter key, it's gonna come in here and it's actually gonna trim these objects based on this face right here. So this could be a massive, massive time saver for you when creating any kind of paneling or roofing materials or anything that has repeating objects like this that need to go in complex spaces. And so let's say we wanted to add a window in here. And so we would rough out the opening of our window and then make sure we draw a bigger box for everything else that we want to keep. We could delete out the window. Well then, we just activate this tool. So we'll select our boards, activate the tool, and click. What that's gonna do is that's gonna cut out an opening in this panel right here. So then I could come in here and I could delete this. So I'm gonna erase out my guides. And what that leaves me with is this nice opening inside of my panel wall right here. So you could use this in order to block out openings inside of walls made of panels as well. So leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this extension. If you're using it, I just love having that conversation with you guys. I will link to some other tutorials on this page talking about similar things as well. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.